I'm Satyajit Bose. I'm a lecturer in discipline at Columbia University School of Continuing Education um, and the Earth Institute. What you're about to see is a set of three lectures on the mathematical essentials necessary to go through our Master of Science in Sustainability Management program. This is the second of three sessions. Today we're going to talk about slopes and derivatives, which is basically calculus. We'll talk about univariate calculus for quite a while, which is calculus related to functions of single variables. And then we'll get to multivariate calculus. Um, and um, okay, let's, I'll just give you a quick overview here. We ended last week, or we ended uh, in the last session, talking about slopes of linear functions. Today we're going to start speaking about slopes of nonlinear functions, which will take us into calculus. Um, and the first and second derivatives are methods of computing um, the slopes, or actually by definition the slopes of a function. We'll talk about concavity and convexity, which are um, properties that you'll need to understand in order to use calculus for practical applications. Um, then there is a large section on rules of differentiation. Some of you may have thumbed through the slides that I sent out this afternoon, and there's probably a third of the slides are on rules of differentiation. We will spend a little time going through them and doing some examples, but you don't need to learn the rules of differentiation. Okay? They're there to help you when you need them. Um, but in general, the point today, and also the point in other classes that you'll take in the program, is to understand what the rules are for, um, when you might need them, uh, who to ask if you need to use them and not necessarily actually to use them yourself, okay? Um, but, you know, if you are, um, if you want to know about how to use a tool, even though you might not have to use it too often, you do need to use it once or twice to get a sense of what it is. Then we'll talk about maximization and minimization, which are, of course, the key practical applications of calculus. And there we'll do some examples, and then we'll talk about uh, multivariate calculus. Okay. Okay, everybody ready? Calculus is about, calculus is a method that facilitates speaking compactly about slopes of nonlinear functions. Okay. You saw earlier that linear functions have very simple slopes. They have constant slopes. Nonlinear functions, by definition, do not have constant slopes. Their slopes change as the value of x, the input variable, changes. Um, because they change, um, things get a little more complicated, but calculus is a, is a set of shorthand tools to allow us to deal with changing slopes. That's all it is. So if you are asked in future, why do we care about calculus? What is calculus? It's simply a set of shorthand tools to help you deal with the varying slopes of nonlinear equations. Okay. Um, by definition, the slope of a nonlinear equation at a particular value of x, at a particular value of the input variable, is the slope of the tangent line to the function at that point. Okay? Or to be more precise, the slope of the tangent line to the function at the value at that point. So let's put x here. 
in the last session, I referred to the vertical axis as y. Okay? Often, we'll also refer to it as f of x. Okay? So this is the independent variable. This is the dependent variable, the function of x. And this curve is a graph And remember what the graph is. Uh, anybody want to tell us what a graph of a function is? It's the line between the points. Okay, so you're close. It's a line that connects all pairs of points x, comma f of x that satisfy the functional relationship between the two or that satisfy the equation that describes the functional relationship between the two. Right? So this is the graph of a function. So every point on this line or on this locus satisfies the functional relationship between x and y or the function of x. Okay? Now, if I take a point, an arbitrary point let's say x star from all these possible values of the independent variable and I ask well what's the value of the function at that point uh, okay so this uh, and it might help to think of x as something particular let's say uh, if you are concerned with yields this could be fertilizer input and this could be yield per hectare. Okay. Uh, this value we're calling f of x star. Okay, so this could be uh, 10 pounds of fertilizer per square meter, and this could be certain number of bushels of corn, let's say. Okay. Um, at that point, this point has the Cartesian coordinates x star, f of x star. Okay. In the last session, I might have referred to this point as 2, 3, let's say. Okay. Now, the tangent line to the function is the line is the straight line which just touches the function at just that point and nowhere else or nowhere else nearby okay um, and of course since this is a straight line it has a constant slope and that constant slope is by definition the slope of f of x at x star. But if I took some other point, instead of x star, if I took some other point, let's say x hat, then the function has a slightly different slope. Okay? In this case, at x hat, is the function steeper or shallower than at x star. Steeper, right? So this function is getting steeper as x increases. Okay. Um, yes, so the, this tangent is a straight line. It has a constant slope. That slope, the, the number, the constant number that you get, that number is the slope of the function f of x at x star. There's a different number that is the slope of the function f of x at x hat. Now, yes? The x star, that's a good question, the x star is a particular value of x from all possible values of x. What was the example that you gave? For example, uh, you know, it, this might have been the number 2. 
Okay, so that, this is a good question because you want to clear this up and it's a very common um, uh, 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 a ver very common point of confusion. X is a variable, for example, as you said, fertilizer input. So it's a concept. It's a measurable concept, right? That's X. X star, on the other hand, is a number that uh, describes a particular value of that concept. So X you can think of as fertilizer input and X star could be uh, two pounds of fertilizer input per square meter. The number two would represent X star. And indeed, you know, if it would be far less confusing if instead of saying x star and x hat, I used the number 2 for x star and the number 3 for x hat. But I want you to go beyond the specific numbers because, of course, when you do this analysis, it could be any number. And um, in, not only could it be any number, but in particular, you will be doing analysis when you don't actually know the types of numbers that might be in there. Um, so that's why that's the leap that you have to make now, okay, or, or it, it, as part of this process, okay. Um, and just to address that question a little bit further, f of x is a conceptual quantity such as yield per hectare that is measurable. f of x star is a particular number of yield per hectare. For example, this could be four bushels of corn per hectare. Okay? If your functional relationship says that by putting in two units of fertilizer you get four uh, bushels of corn, then x star would be two and f of x star would be four. Okay, um, now the tangent line, of course, as we just said, passes through x, f of x. Now, here I had said x star, comma f of x star, to denote a particular point. Now what I want you to do is to imagine, see, I told you that when I increase x from x star to x hat, the function gets steeper. So you know from the last session that when the slope gets steeper, what's happening to the number that describes the slope? It's going up, right? It's increasing. Okay, so uh, in this case, when I go from x star to x hat, the slope of the function is going to increase. Um, if I go from x hat to x star, the slope of the function will decrease. The slope of the function is itself dependent on x. Okay, so that's a key insight that you want to take away uh, that calculus uses. That is, for a nonlinear function, the slope of that nonlinear function is itself a function of x. That's not the case for a linear function. In a linear function, the slope of the linear function is just a constant. Okay? Um, so, here I drew a tangent line at a particular point, x star, f of x star, and on the screen, I've called this point x, f of x. Because, of course, that x star could be anywhere. This, there could be an x star here, there could be an x star here, there could be an x star here, and so on. So you can think of any of these points as being collections of points x and f of x, and you could draw a tangent at any of those points, 
and that tangent would have a slope. Okay, um, so now if I wanted to describe for this nonlinear function, if I wanted to describe the slope at every point, I could sit down and draw lots of tangent lines and compute the slope. And people did that 3,000 years ago. Um, actually, people did that 400 years ago. Okay? Um, and, uh, you know, and it's not, nothing to be laughed at because all sorts of insights were derived even from that type of work, right? I mean, people worked out that the world was round just from doing that. Um, without calculus. Okay, um, but the um, uh, but now suppose that we want a more compact way of analyzing the relationship between x and the slope. Okay, well, uh, you know what you could do since you learnt about different ways to construct functions last time, you could compute lots of different values of x, the associated slopes along the values using the tangents, put it in a table, and graph it. Okay, and what do you think the graph of a function that gives you the slope of this function for different values of x what do you think that would look like? Yes. What's your name? Sorry. Desiree. Yes, of course. Okay. Um, a line beginning at zero sloping up. Um, but perhaps you could tell your colleagues what makes you say that. Like that? Okay, um, so Desiree is absolutely right. At uh, w w actually, it doesn't necessarily. It doesn't have to start at the origin. It could. Uh, it could look like this. Okay. Um, yeah, we we just we don't we don't know what happens to the function out here. Um, but clearly, this is a function that slopes upwards, which means it has positive slope here. At there's some point where it, we think that it might be flat. That's the point where Desiree says the slope of that function is going to be zero. And as x increases, it gets steeper, which means the slope gets higher. Now, why do you think that this is a straight line going up. Sorry? It doesn't change. Uh, actually, we don't really know that it's a straight line. Given what I've told you, um, it, it could, for example, uh, for it not to have a, a ref, uh, an inflection point, it could sort of go like that. Or it could go like that. We just don't know uh, whether um, what will happen further out. But there's a good chance that it could be a straight line. Okay, and in practical applications, um, especially with complex nonlinear functions, often we have to look at a small a set of parameters, a small set of changes in the, the, either the dependent or independent variable. You know, so if you think of climate uh, change models, uh, large um, uh, generalized climate models, 
uh, uh, you know, that couple, let's say, atmospheric uh, processes and ocean processes, they don't generally have built into it a functional relationship for the entire range of parameters. Um, so uh, if you think of uh, what's the current concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Anybody know? Yes, David. Around, yeah, around 400, 392, let's say. So um, th those models don't know what will happen if uh, carbon dioxide concentrations were at 10 or at 600. Um, they simply have some expectation they, they have some expectation of what it'll do around the value 400, and they might extrapolate slopes beyond that value in either direction. But they have, um, they're not designed to understand the nonlinearities beyond the range that it observes. Okay, so that's, that's a very common feature um, of environmental analysis, or, or indeed any kind of uh, mathematical analysis. Okay. Um, this is... You're probably wondering why I put this up. Um, the, uh, the reason this is up is so that you... Now you have a sense, okay, from looking at this function, this nonlinear function, how its slope might look, okay? As I said, you could work out the slope at every point, tabulate the results, draw a new graph. Now, suppose you don't want to deal with graphs. Graphs are cumbersome to deal with, and you can't do mathematical calculations with them. Uh, and this is why you would need to use calculus. So essentially, the elements of calculus um, then proceeds from the following reasoning. It says, okay, that process, that iterative process which I talked about before, where I compute different values of x and find the tangent and work out the slope, let's try to describe that process in a mathematical way. I have the same nonlinear function, the heavy black line, the heavy black curve. I can draw a tangent line at the point f of x star, as before. And in addition to this tangent line, I could draw a secant line. The secant line is a straight line connecting the inside part of a curve. So I can draw a secant line from this point f of x star to some other point f of x star plus delta. Delta represents the distance between this point here and that point. It's a, uh, it's a change in x. Suppose I increase x from x star to x star plus delta. I compute the value of the function up here. And I draw a straight line there. Question. Yes. That q is a random point that you choose, right? The q, what's random is the delta that I chose. Okay. Uh, I, I pick an increment over x star and I go to some other higher value of x. I, I pick that delta at random, let's say. And then once I pick that delta, then I find out what's the function at that value x star plus delta. And that's the q. And I could draw the secant line here. OK? Um, now, I can work out the slope of the secant line, probably. How would I do that? That's a straight line. You probably know how to work out the slope of a straight line. Um, it's a little bit different from the tangent line. So what, 
how would I do that? Anybody want to take a guess? I, right, so Nazanin says... Okay, we have two points P and Q. Here it's X star and F of X star, and here it's X star plus delta and F of X star plus delta, right? So I could work out that slope. That slope is going to be higher than the slope of the tangent line. Um, now, suppose that I were to reduce the size of delta. So instead of having an x star plus delta out here, I had an x star plus delta somewhere in between. I could iterate that process again, compute a new value for the function here, and instead of the secant line that I've shown there, there's going to be another secant line from p to some point like this. The slope of that secant line is going to be closer to the slope of the tangent line. Agreed? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so just a second. So um, if I were to iterate this process so that I had infinitesimally smaller values of delta, the secant line would get closer and closer to the tangent line. Okay? Um, and mathematically, the derivative is, an, is a function that tells you what the limit of the slope of the secant line is as delta gets smaller and smaller. And the key insight of calculus is understanding that there is such a limit in many situations and that that, that limit can be expressed uh, by a mathematical formula, not just by iteratively writing down slopes and associating slopes with values of x. Okay? Okay, so, um, you know, so this is just to give you a sense of the construction of the derivative. You don't have to worry about this. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about what this really means. But if, it, if you like the notion of how a derivative is constructed, uh, through this uh, infinitesimal reduction in the value of delta so that the secant line gets closer and closer to the tangent line, it might be nice to think about uh, how it's constructed. Here, this is just what Nazanin told us earlier. This is the, slope, this is the uh, formula for the slope of the secant line. Okay, this is the rise over the run, the run is just delta, and the slope of the tangent line is simply the limit of this as delta goes to zero. Okay? And the key insight of calculus is realizing that that limit can be formulaically expressed for lots and lots of equations, uh, lots and lots of functions that we deal with. Okay? Everybody with me at least at the sort of 10,000 foot level. Okay, just uh, uh, what, what, remember what I want you to get out of this is to be able to explain to your grandmother, if she is not mathematically inclined, my grandmother was, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, that um, what the point of calculus is uh, and uh, what it's all about. Okay?